No time to waste. Hello, hello, Twingo talks. Haven't happened in a long, long time. Uh, I don't even know which episode this is. Probably 14. My guess is Twingo talks episode 14. You can check it out in the in the title if I got it right or wrong. And uh, today we have great news. Amazing news. Like <laughs> I'm actually speechless. I. Uh, I was so nervous on the upcoming news like I was I did not expect it I was like holy shit this is actually happening and uh, my heart started to beat so fast it was crazy I, I like um, I even had a little like I don't want to sound too dramatic but it felt like I'm, I'm getting like uh, uh, my vision getting blurry and I'm like holy shit this is crazy if, if this is gonna happen it's crazy and the thing that happened is that poof, I'm a blue belt <laughs> holy shit um, Wow in a way um, kind of yeah I understand I understand that it was coming inevitably and uh, it wouldn't take much longer for me to to get to the point where I'm getting promoted but honestly uh, unfortunately you do not know what is happening in my life I have not been filming these episodes for a while and uh, this is why I haven't done it uh, the thing was that I was preparing for uh, Jiu Jitsu Championship a French National Championship and I was fully locked in and focused to compete at the highest level in France and uh, very very unluckily two weeks before the competition I was having a very intense training uh, at the Academy uh, and I was locked in and loaded I have never felt myself so good technically so good mentally so good uh, physically I felt like I'm in a constant beast mode like uh, I was banging like the, the feeling was Outstanding! I have never felt myself being so confident in jiu-jitsu. Uh, I'm not gonna get too technical because uh, not everybody is doing jiu-jitsu who is listening to this podcast. So I'll just um, talk about the whole thing uh, in general. So the very intense training session ends. I was doing hard combats, and after hard combats, I decided my friend to go quickly into the uh, our little gym at the Academy and do a couple of sets of muscle training strength training uh, and I had a shoulder injury at that point probably I shouldn't be talking about my injuries uh, on camera if uh, my opponent the future opponent is watching uh, and he will be like oh shit this guy is fucked up shoulders let's uh, let's maximize on that gives a shit um, um, yeah I had my shoulder injury so I was focusing on other type of muscle training so I decided to train my back after the training and I was doing deadlifts and I started uh, doing deadlifts with fairly low low uh, I'd say no me medium uh, medium weights it was uh, it was heavy but it wasn't crazy heavy so I was doing explosive deadlifts uh, and I was doing a set of 10 deadlifts and on the last three deadlifts I felt my back having a weird sensation lower back having a weird sensation uh, but still I finished finished my set with the weird sensation in my back I carried the uh, the weight to the stand and I felt like this is not good but it wasn't painful at the beginning it just didn't feel all right so there we are with my friend uh, Raimana hey, eating acai bowls and like slowly slowly I start to feel the weird sensation stronger and stronger and I'm still like nah this is probably nothing it's probably nothing uh, we go to sauna together we sit in sauna for three hours and the, the back really starts to hurt like hurt I'm walking and it, it's painful and I'm like shit this is probably not that serious it's probably gonna gonna hurt for a couple of days and it's gonna be all right well fortunately it wasn't the case I fucked up my bed very bad I was having trouble with walking like walking with her
hard. And uh, I have a job where I need to do physical things. Either it's construction site or it's in tourism. I still need to carry stuff and engage my back. So it was not at all helping my situation. And I'm not the type of person who will take a sick leave. Uh, so I just kept on working. And uh, the back was really, really fucked up. And I kind of already felt that it might not heal until the championship by by the time one week went past after the injury it was still just as painful as at the beginning and it was fucking horrible at the first day uh, I mean at the next day after I, I suffered injury I was um, I was working in tourism and I was pushing some bicycles and the back pain was so intense that it was, I, I, I was feeling sick in my stomach. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> fucking crazy. And uh, then, uh, yeah, why why are there are no, no videos, no activity on social media? Well, it's because I've been going through things mentally uh, because I was so much invested into this whole jiu-jitsu world. Everything I did outside of jiu-jitsu was to help me to go towards my goals in jiu-jitsu earning money so i can buy supplements so i can buy food so i can buy petrol uh, to get to training and uh collecting money for a new competition kimono and whatsoever like everything i did my eating habits my uh, sleep schedule uh, other healthy ca habits uh, my writings in the notebook in the notebook the only thing i would write about was jiu-jitsu so all of a sudden i'm in this place where i cannot do it anymore my back is fucked i cannot train and uh of course i get into the depression i start to ask myself very big questions what is my life what is my life outside of jiu-jitsu what 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 if i can never do jiu-jitsu again of course I, I i don't believe in such things i believe that you can recover from almost every injury to a certain extent and uh but still the questions were rising and uh i've been actually on quite of a journey of re uh refining myself finding myself once again and uh, redefining myself who am I what am I doing what are my passions in life what are my dreams in life and uh, I actually realized that I've probably over invested myself in jiu-jitsu I probably went very obsessive about it which I was aware I was completely obsessed with jiu-jitsu absolutely they almost nothing else existed in my life apart from jiu-jitsu I would not go and visit my family because I have competition in jiu-jitsu I would not have weekends with my girlfriend because I need to go and train on a Saturday um, and basically the story goes on and it goes on and goes on and goes on and now uh, in this whole thing I started to look back in my life and thinking what other things I'm good at and I actually came to the conclusion that I was the best at anything I have ever done in my life is music and uh, then I started looking back at what happened with my music uh, music journey and that I have went so far away from it and I have sidetracked in so many different directions which are not necessarily where I want to be. For example, photography, for example, videography. Those are cool hobbies. It's nice, but uh, at some point I took them a little bit, maybe too serious, too obsessive. And I put the guitar on the back burner for years. And that was because I was burnt out I burnt out and uh, there was a big big mistake in uh, my approach and my musical approach I would uh, study like a crazy person I would uh, get better technically all the time but the problem was 
that I would not put my skills to use. I would not write songs. I would not uh, perform in concerts. So if you don't actually show your skill set, your craft to other people, eventually you just start to lose passion for it because it becomes meaningless. Like, why am I doing this? For what reason? Very individually, yeah, I can... Uh, yeah, behind the closed doors, uh, in between four walls, I can see myself playing, I can hear myself singing, but <laughs> nobody else can. And nobody else can say to me uh, things that I need to hear, hear, where I need to improve, or where am I really good at? Because encouragement is really valuable, it's really needed. So this is the journey I've been I've been going through. It was in a way it was depressive, but also I, I do not let myself to be a sorry ass and I do not allow myself to go too much on the self-destructive path. Yes, I, I started to eat like a very very unreasonably I tried to get back to training but it was really bad like uh, I would get injured again re-injure my back I would um, pick up a little bit of drinking maybe smoke a joint here and there and uh, it's untypical I haven't been in this kind of uh, lifestyle for a very long time and uh, the kind of experience of not being able to train threw me back into it and uh, luckily I allowed myself to find a way to refocus myself and to pick up on what I can do when I cannot do jujitsu and this musical journey is being exceptional it's healing it's uh, so refreshing I have never felt such a spark for music as I as I'm feeling lately I have never listened to music with such intensity that I have listening to it lately it has been a long time since I've been so much into the music I don't remember the times until I reached the burnout and it's a fucking blessing I love it so much I love it so much and uh, I'm if I'm being completely honest I'm in crossroads one side of me is like you have a blue belt you can train again yeah, maybe I cannot train like fully because my back is still not completely healed. But basically, new season of competition is coming up. I can train. I have to train to be able to compete at the highest level uh, of my capabilities. But at the same time, I know that there will be no time if I'm doing so for music which I discovered for myself again and that I'm absolutely fascinated about right now and where I can actually see the defaults that I used to have before and uh, I know what I need to do to not get to the point of the burnout I have learned these lessons because of other crafts that I have been done, ex especially jiu-jitsu, because in jiu-jitsu you do not train, at least in my experience, I do not train just, just to train, I train to go and compete, so I improve my skills, I improve my physical abilities to afterwards go out and show it to myself in the real scenario, to other people, and to see what am I made of and, uh, and to face my fears because fighting is fucking scary just as playing music in front of people I, I sang just recently I sang in front of people it's crazy how much it changes you when I sing alone in a room my voice is confident I can sing loudly and wow you know it's nice but then I sing in front of people and I'm, sh I'm shaking like a little girl because I'm <laughs> I'm fucking scared. It's a scary experience. You're so vulnerable. So jujitsu has showed me the path that I've been ignoring on my previous musical journey that has been going on since the age of 17. And 
there have been a period when I was obsessed with it for four years straight playing every single day hours and hours and hours waking up at fucking 4 a.m. in the morning to be able to play music before I go to school and when I go to school I take out my notebook and I don't write the stuff that the school is teaching me because I'm writing fucking words and I'm writing notes I'm sorry for swearing but it just feels so right right now to swear and um, yeah I, that, that was the thing that I was missing I was missing the output the challenge the putting myself out there being vulnerable being scared being not sure that I will like what I'm doing that people will like what I'm doing that people are gonna say shit about me I never experienced that a little bit tiny bit not enough not enough concerts not enough music made that's the issue that's the freaking issue so now I'm in a crossroads what am I supposed to do should I come back into the jiu-jitsu and like fully dedicate myself or should I dedicate myself to music and uh, leave jiu-jitsu at the back burner or should I halfway do both of the things with which I don't know if will actually work I don't know if they work like that and part of me is saying maybe just focus on music and do jiu-jitsu more as a hobby and still compete but understand that the level you are going to be competing at is not going to be as good it's very simple it's a straightforward concept the more you work the better you are talent is beatable with hard work there's no single place that will show it better than jiu-jitsu mats no but it's very similar in music as well but yeah in other sense blue belt it's crazy it's it's been such a journey and it was so pleasant i i've visualized the walk every time you receive a, a upgrade in belt you're standing in front of the class people are gathered on the sides and they smack you with their belts on the back i was visualizing that moment for such a long time and i knew i will be walking as slow as i can because i want to feel it i want to feel the moment i i absolutely want to feel the moment it felt fucking incredible amazing it's been such a hard work to get to to the point where i'm at and this is only the beginning blue belt is it's just the beginning this is nothing it is it is a lot and it's nothing at the same time <laughs> it's crazy and uh oh my god the people of academy i can i cannot be more blessed with the with the people that i have by my side and people that i have training me and my training partners and also people behind the scenes who support me on this journey and help me with competitions help me with trainings uh, and all sorts of other things it's it's an outstanding community it's such a blessing it's unbelievable and uh, to receive so many warm words after after receiving my belt it was incredible everybody's saying like you deserved it been coming you deserved it and it's like <laughs> thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you you know they can just say the Jews they would say they could just say congratulations but now they put in an extra effort and say that you deserve it which is like which means a lot coming from them because I see that they're extremely hard-working people and there's not a better thing to hear coming out from hard-working working people that you deserve whatever you just received that's absolutely absolutely incredible and I have no idea where where this journey is gonna gonna take me 
I'm for sure competing. There's no doubt about it. Hopefully, I'm, I'm gonna try to look at the... Holy shit, crazy cars driving around. I'm gonna start to look at the closest competition, which for now is September, which is good. My back still needs to be healed. This is gonna be probably my first competition as a blue belt, if I'm going there, because it has quite a logistics. I need to earn a bit of money as well to, to make it happen. The competition is in Latvia, my home country, championship of Latvia, and it um, means a lot to me. Zero clue how I will be able to perform with this new belt, with a much stronger competition and in front of Latvian people, which I have seen the results of Latvian competitors and they're really, really, really strong fighters. So, if I am gonna do what I have said that I'm gonna do and be like halfway training, then uh, my chances might not be so good. <laughs> but it still would be cool to go out and uh, do my best, show my best, show up and uh, just go for it. The ones who do things, those people live their best lives. Go out and do whatever you want to do. Uh, don't hold back and put in your best effort. Work hard at it. If the time is limited, work in between the time you have. And put in maximum. Put in everything. Invest your soul and mind in it. Your heart. Don't bullshit around looking around and talking uh, with other people in between. No phones, no nothing. Focus on the thing. Dedicate yourself. It's an uh, incredible feeling. Thank you for watching. Whoever is still watching, sorry I have not been here for so long. As I mentioned to you, the least minimum we're gonna do is 20 episodes. And we're getting closer to that and closer. And then we'll see where this journey takes us. Maybe next time I'll do some random thing and I'll film a music video or something. Let's see what happens. And actually, Actually, I love you, White Belt. I so didn't want to say goodbye to you. Amazing, amazing. I love you, people. Thank you for watching.